All right. Hi, friends. I'm Dr. Josie DeVidio. I'm a longtime dentist, a registered yoga teacher, and certified wellness consultant. Today, I am chatting with Dr. Sahar Yaftali. She is a dentist in California. Um, she graduated from the Crown of Wellness program, which is a signature program that I created specifically for lady dentists to help them go from burnout to breakthrough. Today, we'll be talking about Dr. Yaftali's experience in the program so that you can get an idea of how the program might help you. So consider today the case study of Dr. Sahar Yaftali. Doc, welcome to the show. Thank you for being with me today. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. So for those who don't know you, tell the audience a little bit about yourself and your practice, where you're located, what kind of practice you have. I know what you all are thinking. Why is she already burnt out? She doesn't look like she's <laughs> valid enough to be burnt out, but I did experience a high level of burnout early on. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm just a general dentist in Simi Valley, so Southern California. I purchased my office from Dr. DeVideo. I was working as her associate for a couple of years. In 2019, I purchased her practice. So I'm going on year five of ownership. It's just a family dental office and um, newly engaged. I have a dog. All of those great things in life didn't happen as early as I wanted to. I was basically feeling like the office um, owned me, that I didn't own the office. So I was on that grind. I was, you know, fell, fell to the social media pressures as many of us have. So I, I'm in a much better place now. So I'm excited to get into that. But just being from Southern California, general dentist, everyone knows California is saturated. So I can, I know you all feel that struggle from those of you who are from California. <laughs> Yes, California, I imagine it's this similar in New York, but California is a beast in and of itself. We yeah. have five dental schools here and put, they put out a lot of dentists. And so, you know, we have multiple dentists in every building and on every corner. And, um, you know, the struggle is real. It's, it's competitive. You have to, you know, it's expensive to live here and to work here. Uh, there are a lot of regulations to deal with. So in addition to, to just, you know, having dentistry be hard, there's all of those things that contribute to the challenges of owning a dental practice. Um, and even if you don't own a practice, honestly, because I can remember being an associate and having it be stressful and challenging. Yeah. And you were my associate. You were also yep. an associate in other offices. So tell us a little bit about your associate experience and maybe what led you ultimately to consider purchasing a practice. So I really didn't work as an associate that long. After I did my general practice residency, I was officially done in 2017. And I remember being an associate in the different offices and everyone having a different system of how they wanted things done, material, um, instruments, uh, like just protocol. And so you have to kind of mold yourself to that office when you go there. And in the back of your mind, you're like, well, I would have done it this way, or I would have done it that way. I think this would be better. And then you find yourself as an associate bringing up to the owner doctor, you know, well, my other office does this. Why don't we try this? And being on the other side of it, I now feel how that that comment can really sting because you've put your time and energy into a system that works for you and works for your office. So getting just everybody's different um, ideas on how dentistry should be done. But not only that, the um, working as an associate in California, you may have a day rate and then potentially a percentage of your production and being really new, being young, nobody wants to see you. Everybody wants to see the owner doctor. And that was kind of your and my experience where I don't think I did a crown on a patient until like a year in. I really, with the patient population we have, it's not just a number, it's not just a, like a patient, it's like a, a friend or family member's friend or so-and-so's grandmother and they are used to a certain person. So I was in offices like yours where that really mattered who was in their mouth. And then I was at other offices where they just want you to crank and just go and go. So 
kind of finding that what kind of dentistry you wanted to do, what kind of relationship you wanted to have with the patient. That was interesting as an associate in California, for sure. Yeah. And so a little bit about your and my relationship. I met Dr. Yaktali when I was volunteering at the free clinic in Simi Valley, which is the town where the practice is. And she was a college student thinking about going into dentistry. And so we became friends. I tried to teach her everything I knew. I said, hey, you should come, you know, shadow me in my office. We did that. Fast forward, she went to dental school. I had the privilege and honor of hooding her at her graduation Mm -hmm. from dental school. And then she came back to California um, and started working as an associate in other offices. And this was sort of at the height of one of my many burnouts in my career. And so I was like, hey, you know what? Um, I need someone that I know and trust. Would you want to be an associate in my office, like maybe one day a week, because at the time I was thinking like many of my clients think, and like many dentists think like I'm stressed out, I'm burnt out. The simple solution is to get an associate. So we embarked on that journey and it was lovely having you there because I did trust you. I knew you, I knew how I wanted my patients treated is very much how you would treat the patients. But as anyone who's had an associate knows, having an associate does not solve all of your problems. It just changes the kinds of issues that you have to deal with, especially if you don't have the mindset that you need to have to have an associate. Mm -hmm. And so I was starting to make changes in my office that was supposed to help me reduce my burnout, (laughs) manage things better. And ultimately that wasn't working, not because the changes were wrong, but because how I was managing my stress and how and how I was operating, the mindsets I was operating from were not contributing to my well-being. At some point, Dr. Yaftali said, hey, would you ever consider a partner mm-hmm. in your practice? And I remember thinking, and I don't know if you remember me saying this to you, but I was like, you know what? I'm married at home. I don't want to be married at work. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And so, and at that point, like it just came out of my mouth. The next thing that I said, I don't want a partner, but if you want to buy the practice, I will sell it to you. And I remember saying to you before the partnership thing, you know, if, if I, if I don't partner here, I remember saying something along the lines of, you know, would you mentor me in buying an office? I think that was one of the ideas I was throwing out because I wanted so much to have an office like yours. I was like, this is the type of practice I want to be in. This is the type of patients I want to treat. Help me, guide me into doing that for myself. And I, I remember you saying, you're like, well, what if it was my practice? And I was like, wait, what? And going back to just, you know, your burnout, I came on as your associate, but I was no ordinary associate. You really took the time and effort to mentor me. And I remember us exchanging all of our notes on Open Dental about every patient. You checked my notes. You checked some photos. You had feedback. You had um, annual reviews with me. You were very invested in just my growth as your associate. So it wasn't like I was, you know, you just wiped your hands. You're like, okay, go do you. I'm going to take the day off. You were remote logged in. You were keeping your eye. So just the amount of investment you took into your office. I don't know if you ever had like a turnoff switch. Even when I was working, I felt like you were working. Like I, I was like, well, she's like, everyone would always say like, like Dr. Josie's ghost is around. We like could feel you in the office, but you weren't there. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was, my off switch was broken. Yes. Yes. You know, and, and I, uh, looking back now, I had a lot of like flawed mindsets about what it means to be successful or have a successful business. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to rest. I, you know, and and now I can, we can spend like hours talking about all that I have learned. Yeah. 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 And, and sort of that's how the crown and wellness program came about because ultimately when I sold my practice, I embarked on a very, uh, immersive, vigorous personal growth journey, health journey, uh, you know, physical and mental. And, you know, as people started asking me about my journey, I started seeing themes and 
I was trying to teach people what I knew, but it was just way too much. And so I ended up needing to package the information. Mm -hmm. Fast forward created this program. And now here we are a few years later. And I've taken almost 40 people through the program. And so, and it's, it's been a great resource for people who were like me. Yes. You know, I mean, basically what we're saying is I had a very nice practice. I had a good practice. My practice wasn't like unstable. It wasn't unruly. It wasn't mismanaged. It was good. Mm -hmm. And I still got burnt out in a very mm -hmm. profound way. Uh, and that's not all because of dentistry. I had a question for you Yeah. because I was in it with you. Do you almost feel like because of your burnout, because of the level of stress where you, you were under, you never saw your practice as a good practice when you were in it? How did yeah. you feel about, yeah. How did you feel about your practice when you were in the thick of it? Um, I knew it was going well. I knew it could be better. Did it have to be? No. Now I know it didn't have to be right. But I had the pressure like you alluded to social media, Facebook groups, um, you know, well, you should be producing this much. You should be collecting this much. I also knew that there were practices doing significantly worse. Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until we did our sales paperwork and your accountant or my lawyer or someone said, wow, this is a really clean practice and it's doing really well that I got the validation of how well I was doing. Right. It, so wasn't, I, it wasn't until the end. It, it wasn't until the end. Yeah. The exact words were, these are the cleanest books I've ever seen. And I remember like, you were like, oh, like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. you, had, you were like surprised almost. You were just like, well, oh, you finally heard it. And it's maybe not something you were really paying attention to or patting yourself on the back for because of what you were going through. Yeah. Because there was always this drive to do more, to be more. There wasn't this present moment awareness. Yes. 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 There wasn't this like enjoyment of everything that I had built and the idea of letting certain things go because they didn't matter. Mm -hmm. I always tried to create a practice that would suit me and my family lifestyle because my husband traveled for work. And so I was always trying to um, navigate that. But I always felt like I needed to defend that too, because, mm -hmm. you know, most people, when they have a practice, they work full time and then some, and, you know, but there, there are a lot of things that you're being told you should have and should do as a dentist that keep many dentists unhappy. And so that's why an integral part of the crown wellness program is deciding what is it that you want and how do you build that, you know, not giving um, any weight or heavy weight to what other people think you should have and want. Yes. And, that, and that's a hard question for a lot of people to answer. I, and I wanted to also, you know, you kind of, we were chatting just at one of our dinners and you you were talking about, you know, what was going on in your life at that point. And this was way before I started the program that made you decide like you wanted to do the program. And I had to kind of look, you were like looking in the mirror when we were going through those first but like phone calls, those pain points are just staring you right back. You know, working until 7 p.m. every night is not normal. Like 12 hour days are not normal. They're not healthy. You're not validated by grinding and working that hard. It's just about being more efficient with your time and finding, carving out pockets of time like you go through the program to be efficient and get things done. And I was just running an inefficient schedule for me because I felt like the hours equated to me working hard. And it, it was at that time, I remember telling you, I was like, I'm so burnt out. And I felt so silly saying it because it's so early on in the career and it, it was miserable. It was absolutely miserable this early on too. I felt so just beaten down and thinking to myself, I have another 20 to 25 years of this. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? And that's when you were like, well, why do you say that? Because this <laughs> is the crown of wellness program. This is actually what I'm trying to tackle. And 
And for anyone who's thinking about doing it or anyone who's actually in it, I want them to know that when you start it, you're just going to say, yes, I need to do this. I'm so burnt out. I need a solution. And you'll pay and you'll start and you'll be like, okay, I found a solution to this issue because that's how it is in the office. We're just putting out fires here and there. This will handle this. It's not until you start it and there is a method to how you unravel things. It's uncovering a lot of pain points that are not easy to come to terms with. It's diving really deep into, like you said, who you are and what you want out of life. I could not even answer those questions to myself. And that was a scary thing because I, my identity was a dentist. I had no other identity. Like, who am I? What do I want? So those of you who are thinking about doing it or already in it and are like, oh my gosh, like, why aren't I at the solution yet? It's not that easy. It's a, it's work. It is a lot of work, but you're going to be so happy you did it because you're going to come out on the other side of it and you're going to feel like a different person. I will say that 1000% a different person after this program. Thank you. Yeah. You know, to be fair, when, when young people such as yourself or anybody buying a practice or starting from scratch, it is a lot of work, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to be easy. We're not saying that it shouldn't be a lot of work. We're saying you can't only work without taking into account these other things. You can work hard, but work efficiently, purposefully, intentionally, in a focused way to do what you need to do mm -hmm. without driving yourself crazy straight to burnout. Yes. And there's no cookie cutter explanation of how you should run your office. But going through the program, I felt like it was very tailored to me and what I was going through with my hurdles in the office. Like we worked on early on my biggest pain points. It's gonna be catered to you and what your issues in your office are. And there's no cookbook for it. It's gonna be different for everyone. What works for me may not work for another office. So right. that's what I really appreciated too. And you having owned for 20 plus years, you can really relate to and speak to what people are going through. You know, some of this, mental resilience we want to build some of these mental habits just training our brain it's different when you're talking to a dentist than your therapist I would say yeah because it's just a different layer of understanding and it's not to replace therapy by any no. means I'm a big proponent of therapy I, I think it's something very healthy but it's another extra like tool in your toolkit to help build you up for success yeah it's helpful, and I did therapy for a long time, mm -hmm. but it's helpful to have someone in your corner see you and know what you're going through and know what it means if you get a bad review and to mm -hmm. know what it means when your hygienist calls in sick or to mm -hmm. know what it means when your dental assistants are at it. You know, it's just a different understanding. And I would say to the communication skills that you learn because we've you and I have played out scenarios on how to handle really tough situations is so so beneficial in this program I cannot express enough how well because of your training because of what you've gone through you've been able to help me be a better communicator with my staff and really get some conflict resolution things under control and nipped and how to prevent those things from even happening. So I, I really valued that in the program too, because I would tell you scenarios. So-and-so said this, this person said this. And now that my toolkit has expanded, I can pull out that card when I need to, when certain situations come up, because I know how to handle it. I've been through it. I didn't just freak out or have a breakdown. It was, it was nice. That was, that was a cool part of it. You know, a lot of times I have uh, people ask, like, um, are there different steps in the program? Meaning right now the program is set up where there's an online course, there are group coaching calls, and then there are one-on-one -on -one accountability calls where we work specifically on the individual and the uh, issues in their practice in their life. And so I've had people ask me like, well, can I just buy just the online portion or can I buy the online portion with group coaching? I don't know if I'm ready to do the one-on-one. -on -one. And 
So far, no, there's not. And there is a reason for that because I can give you all the um, lessons, but unless you understand how to apply it to your life in dentistry, it's just not as effective. You can read all the books, you mm -hmm. can study all the techniques, you can do all of the things, which is what I've done. I've gotten trained and certified to teach all this, but unless you understand how to adapt it to life in dentistry, it's just one more thing you have to do and figure out. Exactly. And I, I agree with you. I believe anyone who's thinking about doing some things a la carte, it's just not how this program works. It's very beneficial to sign up and start it, start to finish. Because if you are in a time frame where within a week you cannot dedicate 10 minutes to these online lessons, where are you in your life that you can't carve out 10 minutes to work on yourself? You are in a state where you need this program more than ever. And to all, not only that, keep up with the pace week by week, what's going on in your week and your life that you can't do that again the next week. I would say maximum per week, I would spend a total of an hour on the coursework. And so I split that up into certain days. And then I found myself being more efficient that Thursdays were my days to kind of review everything, read some things, go through my coursework, and then it became a routine. And that's a lot of what this program is about is how to set yourself up with these healthy habits that just help facilitate your lifestyle. And it's not just about dentistry, it's everything. And for those that don't know about the program, it goes into a lot. It goes into like your mental health, your spirituality, your water consumption, your sleeping. There's so many different aspects and you don't realize how they're affecting you until you've done this program. There's a lot. And um, it's not until you're actually in the program and going through it that you uncover more and more about where some issues you may have been having that you didn't even realize. You do, if you fall off track on this program, you will get pinged by Dr. DeVideo and she will be on top <laughs> of you. And that's the, that's the perk of it. Like you have someone on you, like you can't just slip up or slide or just not complete the program. She will be on you. Yeah. So. I like, I, I uh, drop into your consciousness. Yes. Yeah. Slide, <laughs> slide into your consciousness. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So can you think back to, you know, you, you talked about how you were feeling burnt out when I mentioned the program to you, cause I was building it at the time. Can you remember like, based on how you were feeling, what you were expecting the program to be at, versus what it ended up being for you? I honestly didn't know what to expect. I was kind of just expecting some yoga and meditation and breathing because you're, a, you know, you have your page, the yoga for dentists. I thought it was implementing like mostly just like mindfulness tips and tricks, like to become maybe more present in your everyday. I had no idea that what it actually was, was uncovering your core as a person like and uncovering your your wishes and what you want out of life and that you know I thought if I could just pay off this practice if I could just get to those years if I could just pay off my student loans I can start living but I learned how to live in the present day and how to make these like moments within the day really special and things to look forward to which I did not know would happen like and it's the simplest things and even with your staff and your patients, like, you know, the small wins in the day, like they're fun now, they're fun to look forward to. And a compliment we received means so much more now. It's not just like, oh, okay. Like we actually all take part in that. Like these are good things. And it kind of trains your mind to look at the glass half full and look at what you have versus everything you don't have. So I didn't know there was so much uncovering as into my own self and my own soul as when I went through this program, because you will see when you go through it and the kind of coursework you do, it's very eye-opening to like who you are. And a lot of people, I don't know, can answer confidently who they are. I think one of our calls, like I wanted to cry because I had no idea who I was outside of this office and outside of being a dentist. Like, who am I? Like, what do I like to do for fun? I couldn't even answer that to you. That was, that was like wild to me. So I was not expecting all this uncovering of my soul basically coming, mm -hmm. uh, coming about from this program. So when we first, when I first started doing the, the program, 
I was working predominantly with, let's say, mid-career dentists, mm -hmm. um, because that's when the level of burnout is high. Mm -hmm. Since then, I mean, you were my youngest client at the time. And, you know, since then, I am working with clients younger and younger than mid-career, you know, like people like you starting out and already feeling burnt out. So let's take a moment to speak to, let's say, early career dentists. Yes. And, you know, what I noticed, because I used to mentor uh, uh, dental students and people considering careers in dentistry, what I noticed from people graduating from dental school, especially post-pandemic, I mean, that's a whole another podcast in and of itself, but what I noticed is that a lot of young dentists come out of dental school and invest right away in some CE, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like pretty intensive involved CE, which mm -hmm. is good and fine. Not a lot of people are investing in, let's say CE for life mm -hmm. or CE that marries life and dentistry, like the Crown of Wellness program. What would you say to early career dentists as they start exploring what kind of training they need to have a successful career in dentistry? Well, I think definitely for at least the younger women, you know, there is this whole like saturated field of CE on veneers, implants, and all of this to be successful and defining what success is. And for me, it would be a female dentist that does have a family that can be married, have kids and sustain that relationship. I think for those young ladies, like, and that goes back to the, what do you want out of life? Like at my core, when I wrote down, like I wasn't trying to be like a billion dollar dentist. I wanted to be married. I wanted to have kids one day. I was hoping to have a family. That's ultimately what I want. And so these young ladies that are starting out in their careers, how do they set themselves up for these healthy habits? Like, let's say they're single, like to even just better themselves as a human and a dentist to one day attract a spouse or those that are in relationships, how can they facilitate making those healthier relationships? Because there are, there were very many, a lot of married women in our course and spoke to how their relationships have evolved and changed just because they were working on themselves and their outlook. So I think just kind of catering it to the younger generation, you know, you may not have all the accolades you want at this time, they will come, but your journey there is very important. And who's along with you on that journey, how you're treating those people on your journey. This is going to set you up for success. This is going to have you be so mentally resilient for all the stress that's going to come. And those good things will come. But if you can make those habits now versus trying to reteach yourself mid-career, for instance, you're going to be in such better health. And especially, especially, I can't stress this enough, the care on your body. And if you are young and starting out and just so concerned about, you know, the CE on all the expensive stuff, you cannot do all those expensive procedures without taking care of, especially your neck and your back. It is so important. So I think this course work through the crown of wellness, there is a health component to it. And it is so beneficial for you and it will become a habit and you will really reap the benefits. And then you'll be able to do those long CE hours of those other courses because you have done this course. So before I let you go today, I wanted to ask you a question. I'm going to put you on the spot. Great. Do you, do you regret buying my practice? No. <laughs> you hesitated. I, I, I remember, I remember when I bought it. The first day I went into my car, cried in the parking lot and said, what did I just do? <laughs> and, it was, it, and it was going back to this program. Like I couldn't see everything that was good in front of me. All I could think about was everything that was hard and not going well or this and that. So I hesitated because I had a flashback to that moment. of, <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, full disclaimer for anyone listening to us, like I almost had this feeling of like resentment towards you in that first year. I was like, why did you do this to me? You just left me with this office and it's so hard and you're, you're not there. And I'm like going back, replaying that. I'm like, you just inherited this wonderful office. It's all yours. You're the owner. You get to do what you want. 
but my mindset was trained to think what was not going well in that moment. And so I've, I've come a long way since then. I remember that dinner we had too. I was like, all I've been doing is complaining and I'm sorry. (laughs) But no, I don't regret it. I don't regret it at all. It's been such a blessing. I wouldn't have it any other way. The, The idea of, or thought of working for someone else other than myself at this time would, would not have been a good choice for me. I think long-term for my own sake and my mental health. So I'm very blessed. I'm very lucky. So no, I don't work there. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm going to throw it back on you. Okay. You regret selling your office. Oh, that's a good question. Um, if I was as healthy then as I am now, then yes, I would have regretted selling it. But I don't regret selling it because of how unhealthy I was. That was the best decision for me at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of clients that I work with who are like, you know, they join the program as their last ditched effort. Like if this doesn't work, I'm selling it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I have no skin in the game, whether people sell their practice or not, you know, but I always try to encourage people to not make those decisions from a state of despair Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's what I did. Yeah. You have to do the hard work, look at your mindsets, look at realistically what's happening and make decisions from there. And a lot of people don't even know where to start with that. You know, and that's what the program is about a lot of that. Right. And so it was the right decision for me at the time because I didn't have these skills that I have now. Had I had these skills, would running a dental practice still be hard? Sure. But I would have been able to manage and deal with it better. And then selling it would have been not the right choice for me. This is a question follow up to that. Had you developed these skills at that time, do you think it was possible to do it while still owning a practice? Had you had the tools? Do you think it's something you yourself seeing at what health state you were in? If someone had given you this program four years ago, five years ago, when you're at the height of selling your office, do you see yourself with the state you were in going through something like this program? Yes. In fact, I inadvertently you know, when I sold the practice, I didn't set out to build this program. Mm -hmm. I inadvertently built this program because of everything that I was learning. I became the consultant that I was needing Mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And I had dental consultants. That's why my business was so good, right? So I had dental consultants, but they weren't necessarily Um, helping me with the mindsets, the understanding, the deeper sort of spiritual work that inform all of the other life choices and decisions that you make. You know, and I, and I was going to therapists, but they didn't get it. Yes. Yeah. You know, and, and therapists were helpful, you know, maybe they helped me last as long as I did. Mm -hmm. But on some level, it, there was a disconnect for me. So ultimately, I became the consultant that I was needing. So if I had had this, and if I would have given myself permission to do it, mm-hmm. it would have saved me a lot of grief. This is not something that was really available five years ago. Right. I, I, not that I can see. And if it was, it was very few and it was hard to find them. So there is a need for this and you're, everyone's going to see more and more of this pop up, how to take care of yourself, burnout, what's leading people into feelings of depression. And it is the most beneficial, beneficial thing you can do to have you on your side. And as your consultant going through this, as someone who experienced it firsthand too. Mm, Thank you so much. Yeah. Is there anything else that you want to share with the audience? I will say, you know, out of, I've invested in CE. I am one of those dentists that love to invest in CE. And I feel like we have no issue paying for those like 
$5,000, $10,000 weeks or long weekends because it is what we get out of it in return. It's all your return on investment. I will say out of all the CE I've taken, the return on this has been tremendous and so worth it. I, you will not regret doing it at all. You will become a better person for yourself. You know, the way you're going to practice and just your perspective on your practice is going to change completely. And I think the biggest thing I can say is that someone I see often, my own mother noticed a difference in me and that just that difference. It's been, I think almost a, over a year for sure, almost two years that I've graduated the program. Those habits are still strong. I still follow those daily habits. And the fact that people very close and near and dear to me have recognized that in me. And for any of you younger dentists who are single, like I didn't meet my fiance until after I completed this program. I think I was just definitely a different person after this program because my energy, everything was more inviting. And like, I didn't have RBF, you know, so <laughs> all those things. It's just your, your mood definitely shifts. Like you're more of yourself and you're more of who you want to be and what you want. So please, whoever's thinking about doing it and you're like, well, how, what am I going to get out of this? It's, it's, it's not, I can't even put it into words. You will get your money's worth plus some. And then having just you available, Dr. Josie, as a friend, as a mentor, as someone who's in your corner, because times will get tough again. And then she will be available. You've gone through the program and she's always there for you to reach out for another call and schedule a call, something like that. She Then that's where those a la carte services come into play. And that's where you can pick from because you've had the training. So I, I highly recommend it, especially if you're a younger grad and or new grad, I should say, younger dentist, set yourself up for success. This is a long career. You got into it for a reason. You love dentistry, but you really have to love your yourself too. And Anyone who has any, any glimmer or interest, please, please reach out to Dr. DeVideo, slide into her DMs, show her your level of interest at this time. Don't be shy. She's a very lovely person to interact wow, with. Thank you. And so just, I would say the biggest thing is just get started. Just get started. You will be like thrilled to see where you are in at the end of this program. So don't, don't be nervous. Just go for it. Dr. Sahar Yaftali, as usual, it is a joy to be with you, to chat with you, to share our uh, fun stories together. Thank you for sharing your experience with the audience. And friends, if you're interested in learning more about the Crown of Wellness program, you can check the links in the description of this podcast. Be well, friends.